Hey guys, let's talk about tonight's episode of Scandal. Um, I was away last week, so I didn't get to talk about last week's episode, which I enjoyed. Um, and, you know, it obviously spilt over a little bit into this episode, especially with everything that was going on with Huck. And I, I just want to say from last week's episode, when Huck finally revealed what happened to him when he was in the hole, when he was in B613, that was just heartbreaking. And we all know that his wife um, went to David Rosen with evidence that there was this spy organization called B613, and this is now unraveling all of the stuff um, from Huck's past, and she wants to, you know, get justice for this. And of course, David Rosen is trying to have none of it, and neither is Jake, but Huck agrees to lie and um, say that he was lying about everything he, that he told his wife, but right when he's being questioned by David Rosen, he can't do it. So now this investigation is going to go forwards, and Huck wants immunity. So that leads us to this week's episode, and we kind of went back to the old formula of the case of the week, which I liked, and it revolved around the guest star, uh, Lena Dunham, and she's from the series Girls, and her character... Um, she wrote a sex book, and it's true. It's actually a true uh, tale of all these 17 men in like government that she's had sex with, and they weren't illegal. It wasn't like she paid them or they paid her or whatever. She just had sex with them, but now she wants to write a book about it. And, of course, Leo Bergen is on there, who is dating Abby, and David Rosen is in it, and all these other people like judges and... Um, people that work at Homeland Security or something like that, like just all these big important people. And they obviously don't want this book to come out. So Olivia Pope is on the case. And the scene when Olivia goes to strip her down, it reminded me of season one when when we the very first episode when Olivia basically takes down the girl who is having the affair with the president or claims to be having the affair and she strips her like down to nothing and so that kind of reminded me of that opening scene between her and sue is her name's character um and she basically says did you like are you trying to destroy these people are you trying to ruin their families and, da, 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 and she keeps going on and on and then she's like what you're gonna do is you're gonna destroy the thing you're gonna shred it you're gonna blah, 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 blah. and she walks out and then Sue comes back to her office and is basically like, I want $3 million because obviously somebody has a copy of my, or somebody knows about my manuscript and they want to, they obviously have money because they want it to go away and you're going to make it happen. And then she starts going on about the great Olivia Pope that everybody in town knows all about Olivia and that they're, they're free of, afraid of her and she's this and she's powerful and she can take down anybody. But she's basically calling Olivia a wimp. She's calling her like a prude and all this stuff because... Olivia was like, what do you think everyone's going to call you? They're going to call you a whore. And she was basically like, who, are, who is this woman? Who is this shell of a woman that I used to be so afraid of and that everybody in town is afraid of? And we all know that Olivia has been some, through some serious, serious trauma. And in last week's episode, we finally saw the PTSD of all of that and her walking around with a gun, drinking, not leaving her house. Um, just she is going through a lot of trauma right now uh, from her kidnapping and rightfully so so I like that that is a storyline that is continuing over and um, she's not able to really shake it but I feel like this conversation or, or this basically stripping down of Olivia that Olivia got from this woman Sue really shook something in her because you know later on in the episode we see Olivia um, about to take a glass of wine and she puts it down and then she gets all dressed up and she goes to a bar and she gives a fake name and she gets she meets this tall dark and handsome guy and he's like you know are you are you waiting for somebody she says yes and then later she says no and then she's like why don't you you know basically I don't want to talk let's just get out of here and she goes into the bathroom and then she puts her hands down on the sink and it totally flashes back to when she was kidnapped and she has a total panic attack she runs out and then she goes back later on in the episode, but this time she leaves with Mr. Tart Tall, Dark, and Handsome. And whoa, he's cute. <laughs> yes, he was. Um, so that was sort of Olivia's journey in this episode. And I'll get back to her in a little bit, but I'm liking, she's still walking around with her gun, but I feel like from this, from what has happened, transpired earlier, this is going to be a new Olivia moving forwards. And the conversation that she has with Cyrus on the bench, when he comes to give her $3 million. Now, why does he come to give Olivia $3 million? Because Abby goes to him telling her, telling um, Cyrus that he's, she's going to have to resign because of 
the, the book is going to come out and it's going to reveal that Leo Bergen is in it and, you know, and that, and that David Rosen is in it. So it's going to link her to this and it's just going to look bad on the White House. So she wants to resign. And he gives her the speech. Well, you know, this is better than the last time where we've already had two press secretaries be shot and killed. And, you know, we had three be fired and it was just kind of like, yeah, it's been a rough, <laughs> a rough few years for the administration, hasn't it? Um, so I thought that was kind of funny. But the interesting conversation is that Cyrus acts like he's being all good and that he can't lose Abby. And he give, he goes to meet with Olivia and he gives her $3 million. And really what he wants to do is he wants to buy the book so that he can get the name of all the other people in the book so he can use it to blackmail them later down the road. And Olivia says a really powerful thing. She's like, this town basically is just, it's like, it's sick. Like they just use you and they just spit you out. And it's just like... It's gross. So when she goes on the out the second time, it's just like she's basically done with this. And she even says, I don't want to know about Fitz. I don't want to know about Melly. I don't want to know what's going on in the White House. I'm done. I'm moving forwards. So her hooking up with this new guy, does that mean she's moving forward with, forward with him? Doubtful. But it means that she's moving on from Jake and the president? Maybe. <laughs> Doubtful too. So speaking of the president and Jake, so we're back to Jake season three where he was spying on Olivia. <laughs> Remember when we were first introduced to Jake and he was reporting to Fitz on Olivia's movements? Yes, he's back to doing that again. Obviously, he can't get in to see Olivia because she's just over it. And so he's got security team out there looking on, over her. So he knows that she's barely leaving the house, that she's basically only going to the office, and she's not even going out for groceries. So... Yeah, he's he's doing that detail and the president's like, keep it up, you know, keeps keep keep looking out for her. And he's like, is she OK? Is her mental state OK? And he's like, in terms of her there being a threat. No, the people who wanted to buy and sell her, they're over her now. Um, but as for Olivia, you know, that's a whole other s story. Um, can I just say that the music in this episode was awesome? We had some sexual healing. We had some Aretha Franklin. We had like a lot of big tunes going on. So I was like, wow. Okay, so getting back to the case of the week, which was Sue, and finally, you know, Quinn and Huck figured out what was really behind her wanting to bring out this book and destroy all these men's lives. Her boss, so she was a girl who liked it kinky, she liked it rough, she liked to, you know, do all these sexual things with these men. It's her body, she can do what she wants, right? And that was one of the points that she said to Olivia, why are you guys looking down on me because I'm getting the sex that I want, that I, that I like? I'm not doing anything wrong. You know, you could look at me as a whore or you could look at me as a publisher or this or an author or a successful woman. Like it was just, it was an interesting tale that she, that she said. And I like that. And even Abby gave a really good talking to Leo when he was all like, oh, when this all goes down, you know, why are you writing a letter of resignation? This doesn't have anything to do with you. She's like, of course it does because I'm linked to you. With me being a really good press secretary, nobody cares about that. All they care about is what I'm wearing. I'm too skinny. I'm this. I'm that. Who am I dating? My, do my thighs look big? And da -da. She says, when they, t when they write about you, do they write about the woman you're dating? No. And it's just that double standard that women always go through. This, this episode, I must say, was a very powerful, you know, I'm a woman, hear me roar kind of episode. And I really kind of liked it. It wasn't like, okay, here we go. Like they're just preaching. It was actually like sitting back going, yes, yes, yes. Like I was just like, I was actually really um, on board with everything that they had to say. Um, so I thought that all that re worked really well. And I thought that scene with Abby and um, Leo the second time around was very powerful. At the beginning, she was just like, ew, 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 you're disgusting. Ew, 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 you're disgusting. And when she went to David Rosen, she was like, ew, 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 you're disgusting. But they're men having sex. Like, it's what they do. Um, so, okay, so back to Sue. Now, when Huck was freaking out that at the very beginning, he's like, I need immunity. Before I go and testify, I want this, I want that. And David's like, no, that's, that can't happen. Like, it has to go in a certain order. And he got really mad. And he's like, no, immunity has to be the first thing on the table. He wants his family back. That's it. That's all. He wants Javi. He wants his wife. He's, he's over all of this drama. He wants his family back. So then when David's name comes up in the book, now he realizes he could be exposed. So David's now saying, you know, I might not even be attorney general after all this, this book comes out because my, my career is going to be destroyed. I can't do anything to help you. I can't even get you out of a parking ticket. And as soon as he said that, I knew she was toast because I just knew there was no way 
that Huck was going to let some Susie Sunshine girl destroy his future. There was just no way. So, of course, at the end, like I was saying, we find out, like, you know, through the three quarters of the way through the episode that um, Sue was actually harassed by her boss. He threw her down on the ground, was basically like, I deserve to have this rough sack that everybody else gets to have. And when she said no to him, she he blackballed her in, like, in all, so she couldn't get any other jobs because she was actually really intelligent. She was really smart and he just ruined her career. So this was her vendetta against all these powerful men. She was trying to destroy them, take them down. So of course, when she goes, um, you know, she, she wants to reveal this, the truth and everyone's all on board. They go to her house and one of the men who was one of the 17 was there and he had a knife and he was holding it up to her. And she was like, help, help, help. Of course, Quinn and Huck go in. They save the day. And Huck pushes the guy out of the way and he tells him to run, go, go, go. And Quinn's like, you let him go. And, and you know, Sue's up against the wall and she's terrified. And as soon as Quinn moved to walk away, I was like, oh, no. He picks up the knife and it was just like, like he put the knife through butter. He just went, and he and he killed her. He slit her throat. And I knew it. I knew he was going to do it. And the second he did it, he didn't even have to say a word, but he did. And he basically said she was going to talk. Eventually she was going to say something. The book was going to come out. David Rosen was going to get um, fired. And he couldn't allow that to happen because he needs his family back. And I was just like, oh my God. I was like, like I knew it was coming, but when it came, I was like, oh. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to swear. <laughs> um, yeah, so, wow. Huck, at this point, he's going to do anything to get his happy ending. And I don't know if that happen happy ending is really going to come, but I think he believes that he is one step closer to it. So at the end, when, you know, now everybody's realizing that Susie's dead and David Rosen comes in with the you know, the letter of immunity and, and he's like talking about, oh, how guilty he feels like, you know, he didn't actually kill Sue, but he feels responsible and da, 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 da. And Huck's basically like just signing away his name. He's like, sign, 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 sign the papers. And he just, it was just bad, bad, bad. And Sue died because, you know, her original threat was still out there. She was going to expose all these people and it just couldn't get out. So yeah. It was a good case of the week. I really, really liked it. And then just the way it ended was terrible. But again, it was one of those things where you you can't get down and dirty with the Washington, like in Washington and think that nothing's going to come back on you. And that's exactly what happened. She almost got away with it and then didn't. So tragic ending, but it was a good, I, I thought it was a good wrap up. And it also tied into everything that's linking, you know, back to Huck and, um, mm -hmm back to Huck and him trying to take down B613. So I thought all that was great. And then of course, Olivia getting her freak on. Yeah, I'm not mad at her for that because that was hot. Um, and then of course, you know, the president's still um, keeping tabs on Olivia. That man will never let her go. We all know that. Um, oh, another thing I wanted to point out because these were other women, you know, doing their stuff in this episode, which was awesome. We had Melly who was, who announced that she's going to try to run for senator of, can't remember which state, but I believe it was the state that the VP, the new VP is from. So there's obviously a vacant seat. And so now Melly is going to run for that seat. And initially she says to um, Gabby, or sorry, Abby, <laughs> that she wants Leo to run her campaign. And then she's all freaked out because she knows that this sex storyline, this story is going to come out. So she's like, oh no, he can't, he's busy, he's away, blah, blah, blah. So she's like, okay, I'll look for somebody else. And then... Uh, um, Lizzie Bear, we all know, is basically being blackmailed by Cyrus um, because of everything that she did with the other VP. So now she, Lizzie Bear goes to Melly and's like, look, I'm over being a Cyrus's little, you know, go to bitch girl kind of thing. And she needs she needs to do something that is relevant and is going to push her forwards as well. So now this is her way of saying, I want to be your campaign manager because I, let's face it, I know you're not just running to, to try to go for Senator. You want to be the next president and that's going to be nearly impossible without somebody powerful. And she's like, you know what I've done. You've seen what I can do. You need me in your corner. And I was like, Ooh, a nice little alliance going on here. So another two powerful women getting together to make a make a big powerful move in uh, politics, which is great. So 
I love that, you know, we've got a new VP that's woman. We've got, you know, obviously Mel, a serious, um, she's been a serious contender all this time. And obviously this is sort of shadowing what could potentially go down in politics, you know, in coming in 2016 when, let's face it, Hillary will probably run for president. Um, so I'm liking that all these shows are showing these women in these really powerful positions and they're not apologetic for it and they're going to do whatever it takes to get there. And I like that. So another solid episode, and I like, again, that we're still dealing with Olivia and the trauma and that she's really not dealing with it. She's really not doing what she should be doing um, to help her heal. She's just now going to do like a 360 and go in a whole other direction or 180, whatever, go in a whole other direction. And I don't think it's going to be <laughs> where she's going to end up is not going to be a good place. Let's face it. Okay, guys, let me know what you thought of this week's episode of Scandal. I really enjoyed it. Um, leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and I will see you next week. Bye, guys.